So I'm going to start you off now with uh, a typical Singapore maths, maths no problem type problem. And this is for a year one class. So you need to transform yourselves back to when you're five years old. Okay, so imagine you're five. And I'm saying to you, I would like you to share this shape between the two teddies so that each teddy has an equal amount. So can we share this shape into equal parts between the two teddies? So have a go. You've got lots of this shape. Uh, scissors, pens, whatever you like. So just play around with it. See different ways you can share that. So my lovely class of five-year-olds, some of you have done this. Okay. Quite a lot of you have done this. So maybe you folded it over like that. How do I know... How can I be sure that these are equal parts? How do I know? Yeah, when you fold them on top of each other, they match exactly. So they are the same shape. I had one class of five-year-olds, and one of the teachers said, because they're congruent. I thought, oh, look at you, five-year-old. Very good. So, because they're the same shape. Is there a solution? Can you find a solution where you've got two pieces that are completely different shapes but equal parts. Is that even possible? Can you do that? Completely different shapes but equal parts. Anybody got any any ideas? Are you allowed to do You're allowed to do whatever you like. You can do whatever you you want to hold yours up? How to write up. How, how do we know that they're equal parts? Because I've got this one. So I've got seven, eight, six, seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could. You could fold your shape into 16 squares. And as long as each person has got eight, you can divide that however you like. So is that the only solution, or do you think there are other ways of doing it? Could you do it with little triangles? Is that possible? You can just keep folding it as long as each part's the same yeah. size. Mm -hmm. Could you? Okay. Yeah. Now, when I first came across this problem, I, I was, to be honest, sceptical, thinking, yeah, but a year one class aren't going to do that. Year one class will just fold it over, and then they'll sit there thinking, now what do we do? And actually, I did do it with a year one class at a very, very difficult school in London, and lots of issues. And it was a September year one class, and I set them that problem, and they were amazing, absolutely amazing. They were cutting and folding and, and just making squiggles and cutting out circles and doing all sorts of things with it. Some of them were right, some of them weren't right, but they did get to that solution where you fold it into 16. One little boy came up to me and he said, I folded mine into 22 pieces. And if I have 11 and my friend has 11, we'll have equal parts. This is year one. And then he fell over. He hadn't folded it into 22 pieces, nothing like. But he'd had that idea to do it. And it really made me think that what we tend to do, what we often do with younger children, is we give them a very static image of what half is. So we we'll say, that's a half, that's a half, shade a half etc. We don't often give them that kind of image where you've got two things that are completely different shapes but it's still equal parts. And so what's happening is the children's understanding of that concept of equal parts is quite narrow because we're just giving them a very traditional even um, image of what we mean by equal parts. Whereas by setting them something like this and saying go ahead and explore it you find out for yourselves what you think equal parts equal parts is all about, then they, there's no limit on their experience. They can explore and understand as much as, as you like. Okay. So the next thing that we would look at if we were doing that kind of thing is to think, well, let's make sure at least that everybody does have that basic level of understanding. So this kind of one problem, everybody doing the same thing but at different levels, we want to make sure that everyone has got to a baseline level with that understanding, but we're hoping that children would have taken it a lot, lot further. And one of the ways we do this in this Singapore approach is to make sure all the children are in mixed groups. So we don't set. We wouldn't put the children that were just expecting to fold it that way in one group and the children were expecting to cut it all up in another group. Everybody sat with everybody else. So the children who maybe are just thinking, I'm just going to fold it over, 
are looking at the other children who are coming up with all these super ideas, so they are being exposed to that higher level of thinking. And it doesn't matter so much even if they don't quite understand what their neighbour's doing. That, that seed has been sown and they've had that idea, they've had that thought. Oh yes, you could cut it, or oh yes, you could do this, or oh yes, you could do that. Okay. So that's the kind of idea behind this one problem that everybody's doing, because they're not all doing it at the same, in the same way or to the same level. So you get that differentiation.